Hey everybody, this is Everyday Commentary. I'm downstairs with my gear going. And we are going to talk about entry-level knives. I don't really want to call them budget knives. Budget knives, I think of like garbage knives and really, really cheap knives. And these knives aren't really cheap. They're really, you know, anywhere from 40 bucks up to closer to 100 bucks in some of the cases. But they all have a couple things in common. And so I wanted to talk about them and figure out what's good and what's not good about these kind of knives. Before we get started, though, I want to point out a couple of things. Number one, this is actually not the budget lander. This is the special M390 lander. I just left it in here because other than the steel, it's exactly the same shape. But the budget lander has a D2 blade. They have a mid-price lander that has a 14C28N blade. And then that one is the M390. But let's talk about this. Uh, so there are a range of steels you see on the table. And quite frankly, they're all pretty good. Only one of the steels, the steel on this knife, is a powder steel. The rest of them are just high-end uh, steels made in a normal variation. Again, excepting this one. So let's talk about the steels. So we have one, two, three, four that have 14C28N, who one, and I think, what's the steel on this guy? You remember the steel on this guy? That, ah, 14C28N. Oh, this might, might not actually be 14C28N, this might be, uh... oh, I got that one wrong. So we have, Four and 14C28N. We have two in Nitro V. We have one in... Uh, powdered steel? Nope. No, yeah, we do have We one. have one in powder steel. You're right. But that, one. that one's not it. This yeah, is a 9CR. Steel. That powder this steel. is the one that's powder steel. What's powder steel? Patrick? So, oh, that's a good question. So, powder steel is where instead of making a pure ingot like the taking the melty steel and cooling it off and make it into a bar or a rod or a sheet mm -hmm. they actually take really fine little molecules of pure steel with no sort of impurities whatsoever and they sinter them together sintering s-i-n-t-e-r is a process where you use temperature change and pressure to weld things to smush things together and so by using really small granules, they lower the level of impurities. So generally, even if you the use... The steel is very hot. No, you can make it do whatever you want it to do. But generally, if you have a non-PM non steel versus a PM steel, powder metal steel, the powder metal steel will ha exhibit the properties you're looking for better than the non-powder steel. But you can make really nice non-powder steels, and a lot of them are the ones that are on the table here today. One of my favorite steels, especially my favorite uh, budget steel, is 14C28N, and this is the Civivi Lumi, and it runs for uh, the 14C28N. Excellent, excellent steel. The other one, the one that inspired this video is, and now I know the name, it's the Vosti Chipmunk, and it also has 14C28N. One of my favorite things about 14C28N is it's basically a set it and forget it steel. It'll hold its edge long enough. You don't have to worry about it going dull. And it will re resist rust long enough. You don't have to worry about getting rusty. One small step down on the steel scale, I think, is Nitro V. Nitro V is probably functionally equivalent but I ended up liking uh, the 14C28N a little bit better. Nitro V is basically uh, AEBL, which is a really good steel. And when they add nitrogen, uh, not a huge difference in performance from AEBL and not a huge difference in performance from 14C28N. I just have found, and I don't know if this is right, I just have found that these hold a little bit sharper edge. Like they hold it longer. The other steel on the table is this steel. This is 9CR13MOV. This is a steel, uh, this is a step-up steel, no, 913, 9CR18MOV, I believe it. Yeah, 18MOV. Um, this is a step-up from 8CR, 
but I don't think it's quite as nice as these two steals, uh, the Nitro V or the 14C28N. And then uh, the only steal here that really is a powder steal is this one. Uh, it is AR, uh, AR RPM 9, which is Artisan Cutlery's in-house powder budget steel. It's kind of incredible. I do find it to be a better performer than these steels. So let's talk a little bit about what, what's going on in this segment of the market. You're not going to get the flashy materials, but you are going to get a pretty good knife. Some of these knives are among my favorite knives out there. The, the Civivi Lumi is really, really great. It's just a great all-around knife. It looks gorgeous, super slim. I love the Justin, uh, the, is it, it's Justin Lundquist design. Really, really great. By the way, this is designed by Jacob Lundquist, which makes it really kind of complicated. This knife is also another really excellent knife. It's got a very simple appearance. This is called the Invert, and it is really, really great. And I love the blue jean micarta material. What do you think? Do you like the blue jean micarta? Kind of blocky kind of blocky it is a little square but what do you think about the material itself look at that did you see that give it a good you can flick it out all day long what do you think about this guy nice and thin 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 Woo. yeah uh unfortunately one of the things that happens when you get into these entry-level knives is you're gonna see a lot of lock rock well not even lock rock just blade play i'm not talking about when the you know, pushing against the lockbar. This knife has almost no ability to play. It's made by Wii. It's really well. This knife is the Hydra, the CMB Hydra, and it's designed by a female knife designer. And I thought that was interesting, so I picked the knife up. It came out of the box, and this had the worst blade play I've ever seen. Like, if I did this, I can move it, and you would be able to see, like, the the line or the handles. Boop, boop, boop. Um, one thing that's happened with these designs is that they've started to trend towards these button locks. What do you think about button locks, Kier Gremlin? No, you don't like them? No, no button locks. Why don't you like button locks? Because you, your fingers stay out of the blade path if you have a button lock. Yeah, but they look ugly and they're hard to push down. Oh, they can be. Sometimes when you get like a really good lockout, it's like... Eh, eh. But these, these then you guys... have to use the pliers. Mm -hmm. I remember that um, the... the gas station knife where you had to use pliers. I think it was a piece of garbage, which is why we don't buy gas station knives. Um, but I, I do find that I like the line, uh, the button locks and like this Civivi Elementum, it is, ha it has, this is the Elementum too. It has absolutely no blade play whatsoever. It's just dialed in. And that's the crazy thing about a lot of these knives is that like, this is the Civivi Baby Banter and it is also mega mega dialed in uh, by the way we have two lundquists justin and jacob and we have two ben petersons in this group and i do think i like the knives uh knife go lander better but the baby banter is still a really great knife uh, another knife this is the gent 2 it's the follow-up on the gent it's weird the gent 1 actually had an s35 vn blade so a powder steel blade and the gent 2 predicting that there would be something of a recession, they went with a budget knife, and this has 9CR18MOV. It's actually not quite as nice a knife as the original. As you can tell, I have a little bit of cold. This uh, pocket clip, though, is not an off-the-shelf pocket clip. It's made just for this knife. It's actually quite good. I like this knife a lot. I wish it had a little less blade play. I've tightened it. I tightened up all of these knives, except for the, the invert to eliminate blade play, because it drives me crazy. But couple other things here the chipmunk it has both a top front flipper and it has a rear front flipper if you want to but then you can also use this as a you know a regular index finger flipper tab what do you think about this thing i like it the green scales look nice but the um the is a button lock it is not a button lock it? it's a liner lock we're getting a lot of liner locks in here it's liner locks or button locks all the way down so we have liner lock, How liner much lock. Did the Hydra have blade play? The Hydra had the worst blade play out of the box I've ever seen. But now that I've tightened it down, it's like super, super solid. Is it a good knife? It is a good knife. And one of the weird things is this knife has a blade that is almost entirely belly. There is not a smidge of straight edge on this belly. 
Like if you look at something like the chipmunk, it has it has a nice belly up here, but then you have a straightaway, so you can do a lot of like cuts like this. That knife's a little bit strange in that it has no belly, or it has all belly. This knife also has a lot of belly, but again, not all belly. There is a little bit of straightaway. Um, which of these knives is your favorite? Like, if you had to pick one, which one would be your I favorite? I could pick one. I'll probably pick this one. This one looks really nice. Yeah, the Civivi uh, Lumi is just an excellent knife. How do you open this? Yeah, it's, this one is a full front lock. You have to a liner, uh, flipper. Can I see the front? Yeah, see if you can do that. Not quite yet. We're getting there. Pretty good. Oh my gosh, it's like a, it's a pokey pokey. Yeah, this is based on an old Scandinavian design called a puko. And they are, pukos are really thin pokey. and pokey. pokey. They were developed by the native people in uh, northern Sweden called the Sami people. And the Sami people developed a whole array of knives. And one of the things that the Sami people did is they made their knives with really good comfortable handles that typically have a swell in the middle and nothing on the front or the back to catch your hand. If you look at a Mora knife, a Mora knives, they generally have handles that are either directly taken from or slight modifications of Puko style Sami knives. And they are great, great handles. I really like this knife a lot. You know, the idea that you have a front flipper, which is like, you know, less than 10 years old and a Puko style blade with a Same handle, which is thousands of years old, is super interesting. Um, what's your least favorite of these knives? Out of the box, I hate blade play because I go really rough on my knives. And if you I, do go rough on your knives, buddy. And if I have blade play on my knife, it goes rough. That This never happened, but the handle will break. And I don't want that. Have you ever had a handle break? Yeah. But not from blade play. Not from blade play for me. Yeah. yeah. Smack it. Also, by the way, you really need to get the treat your knives good or they're going to treat you good. Yeah, so what's what's my least favorite is that um I really don't like um button locks, so I'm it's probably gonna be a button lock. This one looks nice. It's, just, it's a button lock. I wish it wasn't a button lock. If they did if they made a version that wasn't a button lock. I would have totally picked that up. This is one of my least favorite knives because it's very hard to open and you can't open it from the back. Oh, no, no, no. This knife, just in case you can't do the front flipping stuff, this knife has a really nice easy thumb stud. You can open this on the thumb stud. I can open thumb studs. I know, that's what I said. You can open this on the thumb stud. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah, so what do you think? We do you like the chipmunk a little better now that I showed you you could open it on the thumb stud? Yeah, this one is it a button lock? Yeah. It is a button lock. Ooh, that button lock's a nice one. It's a smooth one. It's That's one of smooth. my favorite button locks. Yeah, this is a good knife. I didn't even know you had this. You can get a little that's how light, nice and loose the pivot is. Let's try this one. That's one of the ways you can tell you have a nice button lock if you can do this. Oh, oh look at that. Ooh. Not quite as smooth as the hydro. The yeah, the CMT hydro. This guy is like butter smooth. This is the pyrite from CRJB. Uh, I like CJRB. that. I really like this that. is one of my favorite budget knives out there. I love lo or uh, entry level knives. I love this knife. I have a um, the high end S thirty five VN version. It's awesome. This is the stainless steel version. But look, want to see something cool, beef? Look inside. What's inside? You see it? Nothing. No, no, no. What do you see? I see designs. Yeah. Do you know what that does? Makes it lighter. Yeah. Yeah. So they did pocket milling on this knife. They did pocket, internal pocket milling on an entry level knife with the stainless steel handle. So the end result is even though this is a stainless steel handle, it's not that heavy. In fact, it's probably lighter than this knife, which has inset steel liners. Um, it's amazing what you can get right now in the, the entry level market, because some of the knives and some of the features are things that you would never see on a knife under $100, even five years ago. I mean, essentially this knife is, has flawless fit and finish. It sits dead center, it deploys easily, it has a good button lock, it's not that heavy, 
the liners are cut nicely. Like everything about the uh, the Civivi Elementum is just good. Good, good, good. Good, good, um, good, good. My favorite knife in this set, if if we're excluding the lander, because this lander with the M390 would definitely be my favorite. But if we had the regular lander on it, it would go the Lumi, the um, Elementum, the... Ooh, I don't know. The Lumi, the Elementum, the Invert. I don't know. The Lumi, the Elementum, and the Invert are probably the top three, and then it gets complicated. I haven't had enough time with this knife to figure it out, but once I do, I'll uh, uh, I'll let you know. I'll probably let you know in the review. So that was our Sweet Stuff Saturday for uh, entry-level knives, and uh, we'll see you later.